This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to say let us dance and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Marianne Kellenbach, pastor at Living Faith Church, which is located in Port St. Lucie, Florida, in the community um, of tradition. And today is Friday, October the 30th. We've been talking about that dance between the triune God, right, the Godhead. We say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God, our Creator, God, our Redeemer, God, the Holy Spirit, present with us today. And we're talking about this perichoretic dance, perichoresis, um, that very fancy word, in how the uh, triune God uh, indwells with each other, and then how we are invited to indwell with uh, the triune God, along with each other. And um, I, I really want us to think about that now as we think about the the body of Christ and it is fluid and it is moving and it is changing because it is organic. And we understand that we are always reforming um, into into God's new being, new creatures today. So I want us to take a look at, actually, and what I'm going to do is read for you three quotes, which I absolutely love. So if you'd like to close your eyes and listen to these, no, it's not contemplative prayer or Saturday, but if you'd like to close your eyes and listen to these, uh, it might help you visualize and think about what each of these writers, our authors are saying. We're going to start with um, Timothy Keller, and this is what he writes. Each of the divine persons centers upon the others. None demands that the other revolve around him. Each voluntarily circles the other two, pouring love, delight, and adoration into them. Each person of the Trinity loves adores, defers to, and rejoices in the others. That creates a dynamic, pulsating dance of joy and love. Can you visualize that? I'm wondering if yesterday's um, uh, just glimpse of the Greek dance helped you to visualize it, or maybe there's another type of a dance that you're able to visualize as you think about that. But I love the fact that each voluntarily circles the other two, pouring love, delight, and adoration into them. None demands that the others revolve around him or her. Isn't that just gorgeous? And now listen to this one that is um, written um, by Baxter Kruger. So we're going to build off of that image. Close your eyes. What the doctrine of the Trinity is telling us is that God is fundamentally a relational being. The Father, Son, and Spirit live in conversation, in a fellowship of free-flowing togetherness and sharing and delight, a great dance of shared life that is full and rich and passionate, creative and good and beautiful. And that's written by Baxter Kruger. God is fundamentally a relational being. They live in conversation, who lives in conversation with each other. Three in one, one in three. The great mystery. Don't try to figure it out. Just go with it. In a fellowship, a free-flowing togetherness and sharing and delight. How beautiful is that imagery. And we're invited into it. Or, as I'm now going to read to you, the center and the matrix of the universe is not a machine or a monastery. It is a dance, a ballet, a perichoresis, an interaction of love between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that is so beautiful, so exuberant, so marvelous that the triune God purposed to create us so that we would be part of the dance and participants in the eternal fellowship of the Trinity. Could anything be more amazing than that? We were not created 
to serve God. We were created to be in relationship with the triune God so that we could be part of the dance, participate in the eternal fellowship of the Trinity. As Johann Schultz wrote this, could anything be more amazing than that? Could anything be more amazing than that? Invite others into the dance as you have been invited. Could anything be more amazing than that? See you back here tomorrow for contemplative prayer. Amen. Amen.